All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x is equal to 30. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first start by dividing both sides by 3. So now I have 3 to the power of x over 3 is equal to 30 divided by 3. So this implies to 3 to the power of x over 3 is equal to 30 divided by 3. That's equal to 10. Now, if you guys already didn't know, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So 3 to the power of x over 3, well, 3 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 1. So I have 3 to the power of x over 3 to the power of 1 is equal to 10, and this simplifies to 3 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 10. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the, the log on both sides. So now I have log 3 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to log 10. Now an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent of b to the front of the logarithm. So this is going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 3 to the power of x minus 1, and we can think of a here, or sorry, 3 here as a, and x minus 1 as b. So if I can move b to the front here, then so, I, so can i over here. So now I'm going to have x minus 1 times log 3 is equal to log 10. So now to continue solving this, Log 10, that's the same thing as 1. So now I have x minus 1 times log 3 is equal to 1. Now, if I divide both sides by log 3, I get x minus 1 is equal to 1 over log 3. So now, if I add 1 on both sides, just to cancel out, and I'll be left with x is equal to 1 over log 3 plus 1. So now, to find the exact value, log 3, I can plug this into a calculator, log 3, that's equal to 0 0.4771. So I have 1 over 0 0.4771 plus 1. So now... 1 over log 3, or 1 over 0 0.4771, that's going to be 2.0959. So I have this plus 1, so my final answer is 3.0959. So this is my answer. Alright, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 12. So, let me write this down, 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 12. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first start by taking the log on both sides. So now I have log 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to log 12. Now, I'm going to move this x plus 1 to the front, because if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can go ahead and move b to the front, so this would equal b times log a. So now I'm going to have x plus 1 times log 3 is equal to log 12. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and distribute the log 3. So now I have x times log 3 plus log 3 is equal to, or sorry, sorry. I'm actually going to divide by log 3 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'll be left with x plus 1 is equal to log 12 over log 3. So now I'm going to go ahead and find the value of log 12 over log 3. 
So log 12, you could just simply plug this into a calculator. The value of log 12, that's equal to approximately 1.079. And log 3, you could also put that into a calculator. That's going to be 0 0.477. So I have 1.079 over 0 0.477. And if I divide those two, I get 1.771. Now I have x plus 1 equals 1.771, so all I have to do is simply subtract 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 0 0.771. So this is my answer. Alright, so in this problem I have x to the power of 4 minus 25 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite x to the power of 4 here as x to the power of 2 times 2. So now I have x to the power of 2 times 2 minus 25 is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 2 times 2, I can write as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Minus 25, I can write as phi to the power of 2. So this is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, this can equal x squared plus 5 times x squared minus 5, which is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x squared plus 5 is equal to 0, and I have x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. So for x squared plus 5 equals 0, all I have to do is simply subtract 5 on both sides. These two cancel out, and I'll be left with x squared is equal to negative 5. Now I'll take the square root on both sides. So I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative 5. And the square root of x squared is x. The square root of negative 5 I can write as the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1. And it's going to be positive or negative square root of 5. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1, this is actually equal to i. So now I have x is equal to positive or negative square root of 5i. So these are two solutions. Now for here I have x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. I'm going to add 5 on both sides. Now I have x squared is equal to 5. Now if I take the square root on both sides, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 5 is the same thing, square root of positive or negative square root of 5. So these are two solutions. So these are my four solutions to this problem.